Hey everybody, it's Charlie with Charlie's Flybox, and today I'm going to tie for you a fly from a friend of mine, Keisha Atkin. Uh, Keisha Atkin is Mama Angler on uh, Instagram. You've probably seen some of her work, and she is the, uh, uh, or one of the latest Umqua Signature tires. Um, this is one of her, uh, one of her first flies. This one's called a Mama's Boy. Um, this is not an Umqua pattern, <coughs> excuse me, not an Umqua pattern yet. Um, but I suspect maybe somewhere along the line it might become one. But this is uh, maybe the first pattern she came up with that's unique to her. Uh, and she's got, um, she's a hell of a tire, I'll, I'll say. <laughs> the uh, I've got people out the window waving at me. Um, she's a hell of a tire. She, uh, um, in a short period of time, has become a really good tire. And uh, uh, they fish a lot, that whole Atkin family. And... Uh, um, they get it done. So I'm going to show you this fly. She's one of my favorite people in the industry these days, and uh, um, I'm excited to do this one for you. Uh, so again, this one's called a Mama's Boy. It's a little caddis pupa tied on a jig hook. Um, and pretty creative way to go about it. She's got some cool materials in here as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start uh, with a uh, Tiemco, um, or this is an Umqua, uh, 450 BL. Um, a Hannock 450BL would work here as well. And I've got, I think this is a 332nd brown tungsten bead. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start some white 14 knot thread just behind that slotted bead. And I'm just going to make enough turns to sort of get a jam knot on there. Um, you'll see we're going to have a chance to sort of jam this all up. And I'm going to make a thread base back down well around the hook bend. About halfway down even. And then come back, oh, just past midpoint on the hook. Now for the, uh, for the body, this is um, Kylie's Nymph Skin. And what this is, this is translucent bug gut is the color, um, which is sort of an off-white kind of cream color. Um, and what this is is, is essentially latex, um, stretchy latex sheeting. Um, and what I want to do, I'm going to back my thread up right at midpoint. I'm going to catch this by its end right here about the middle of the hook and then I'm going to stretch it as I wrap back over it. I want to wrap over it all the way down to where I ended that thread base. So again about halfway down the bend. And I want to anchor that down good and tight. Um, that nymph skin comes in a bunch of different colors. Um, one of the cool things about the bug gut color is we're going to put a little dubbing underneath here um, that's going to sort of show through um, and just give us a hint of color in all the right places. <clears throat> So I'm going to take another little pinch here of rusty brown ice dubbing, and I'm going to build the underbody with this. So I want to dub this on fairly tightly uh, so that I have a tight strand to build the shape I want with, and we're going to build sort of a reverse taper. Um, and one of the cool things about this is you got a lot of leeway. By the time we put that, that nymph skin over the top, we'll be able to sort of shape this however we want. Um, but I'm going to start this just about midpoint, and I'm going to work back down to the end of that thread underbody, and then I'm going to fatten that back end up a bit, about like so. So that's entirely on the back end of the hook. <clears throat> now one thing I like to do here is I can just take my thread and sort of pack that down a little tighter, just to compact that. That's really just for shape. It's going to give us a little color that will show through the body. So now I'm going to pick up this this nymph skin. I'm going to start my wrap back here at the bend and fairly loose. Um, I want enough tension on it to hold it taut. Um, but you can see as I wrap how this is creating these segments here. So these are overlapping turns and you want to keep them fairly evenly spaced. We'll get a little tighter spacing on these as we get toward the toward the bead here. But you can see that this reduces the space between the turns as I come forward and you can stretch a little tighter and I'm gonna call that good you can see that is a really nice sort of pupa shape reverse taper and I'll tie that off with a few turns make sure you get it good and tight and then I like to stretch it and trim it off and then anchor that down so you can see the shape that we've got out of that that gives you all kinds of ideas doesn't it um, pretty pretty buggy little body on that sucker um, all right, so now we're going to take another little pinch of this rusty brown ice stub, 
and we're going to do the first part of the collar. And I like to sort of tear this off. I should show you this. Um, so as I take this out of the package, it's a fairly long strand. Um, what I want to do is kind of take a pinch and tear it off. And you can see I've shortened the length of those fibers for the most part. Um, this is going to make a little, little nicer collar on here. So I'm going to dub this on um, kind of loosely. Um, I like it to, you know, definitely be, be bound to the thread, but I'm not worried about being, being slick and tight. So fairly loosely. And just on the front edge of that taper, I'm going to build just a little collar. You can see I'm not, that looks like I'm right up to the beat. I'm really not. I've got a little space in there still. Um, so now for the antenna, or wings, uh, depending on which way you want to look at it. Um, these could be emergent wings or the antenna. I'm going to take, um, this is a piece of sexy floss that I have split. Um, so I've taken a needle, and if you set this down on your table and put a needle right in the middle of it and pull on it, um, it'll split in half. Then you can take that half and split it again. Um, you could also use uh, uh, Senyo Shaggy Dub, um, which is essentially what I just talked about, just done for you. Um, it does not have the modeling that the sexy legs does, so I like the little model on here. Um, and this is brown. So I'm going to tie this in, um, not necessarily at the center of its length, but with two long ends, and kind of X it in, just like you would spinner wings, sort of badly, um, so that it kind of angles back over the top of the fly. And I'll trim those just to the end of the body. So just two short little, little stubs there. Now for the collar, this is CDC dubbing. Um, and you can buy this. You can buy this from Swiss CDC. Let me get this turned around here. Swiss CDC has... CDC dubbing, there you go, um, and we've got that here in the shop. Um, or you can take CDC feathers and trim the fibers off yourself and create your own dubbing. Um, and what we've got here is uh, like a dark brown and, a, and an orange mixed together. Um, so two colors mixed together. And I'm going to take just a little pinch of this and sort of the same gig, kind of put it on there, uh, but fairly loosely. Um, one of the cool things about CDC dubbing, this is a great way to make a CDC collar without having to use a loop, um, but one of the great things about CDC dubbing is we can pick it out after the fact and get a nice CDC style collar out of it um, without having to go through the, the rigmarole of, of wrapping a feather. Um, so now I've got that strand on there. I'm going to hold these antenna back and I'm going to start to build the collar. Um, and I kind of like to overdo this a little bit. It's a little bit big to start with. You can see that's sort of disproportioned. And I'll finish just behind the bead. <clears throat> and then I'll whip finish there. But what I want to do first is just color that white thread. Um, honestly, you don't have to do that step. Um, this thread's not going to show. It's going to kind of tuck in behind the bead. But um, just for the sake of being a professional, I'll color that thread and then whip finish. Come in and nip that thread out. Um, then I'm going to use a piece of Velcro. This is just the hook side of Velcro. Um, and I'm going to come in and pick out both of those dubbings and kind of sweep them back. And you can get at this to varying degrees from the top and bottom. But you can see how that essentially just made us a really cool CDC collar without touching a CDC feather um, just by putting that on as a dubbing. Um, that makes a pretty scraggly, you know, very caddis pupil-like collar. Um, and she's got this in a couple different colors that she does it in. Um, that's, that's a pretty creative use of a material. Um, and I can think of a lot of places to use that. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Obviously, you can tie that in a few different colors. But that's uh, Keisha Atkins' Keisha Atkins mama, Mama's Boy. Um, man, easy for me to say. Keisha Atkins' Mama's Boy. Um, Great little fly. You guys should try it. Twist some up. Try them in the summer. Take care, you guys. Thanks for watching.